Hi everyone, welcome to Raw Online. This is Dr. Srivatsan, your faculty for biochemistry. And in today's session, we will be speaking about sphingolipidosis. Okay, before going to the proper topic of sphingolipidosis, let me try to explain what exactly is a sphingolipid. Okay, and what is a glycolipid. Okay, sphingolipids are the one which has got sphingosin as its backbone alcohol. So, this backbone alcohol will be sphingosin. Okay, to this backbone alcohol, a fatty acyl CoA or fatty acid will get attached to what linkages? Through ester linkage. Okay, ester linkages are C double bond O, O, R dash. So, this is ester linkage. Okay, alcohol and an acid combining. Okay, so this is called as sphingolipid. Okay, so when some kind of uh, an additional group, something like a carbohydrate, when it comes and attaches to this sphingolipid, okay, they are called as glycosphingolipid. Clear? So, are you clear with the terminology glycosphingolipid? It has got a sphingosin backbone with a fatty acid attached to one side and a carbohydrate moiety attached on another carbon. Okay, so as I said before, the carbohydrate units are there. This carbohydrate unit could either be a monosaccharide or this could be oligosaccharide or this could be an oligosaccharide associated with sialic acid. Okay, so according to that, the name actually changes. Okay, so for example, if that carbohydrate unit appears to be a monosaccharide, then this is called as cerebroside. Okay, so this is called as a cerebroside. So, examples of monosaccharides, I will take two examples here. One should be glucose. If that monosaccharide happens to be glucose, this is called as glucocerebroside. Clear? Okay. So, glucocerebrosides. So, these glucocerebrosides form major components in various kinds of tissues and the major peculiarity of these tissues is that these tissues usually will be non-neural tissues. Please remember this, the glucocerebroside will form part of various kinds of swingle bits in various tissues, but mostly these tissues will be non-neural tissues. Okay, we have got another monosaccharide which is galactose. Okay. This galactose, if it becomes the additional group here, then this becomes galactocerebroside. Okay, so the galactocerebroside they actually form the major component of neural tissues in your body. Clear? So please remember, guys. In case of glucose, the glucocerebroside forms the major component in non-neural tissues, whereas galactocerebroside forms the major component in neural tissues okay it has got this clinical context i will explain later on so what is the rational behind stressing out this point okay as i said before now we have got oligosaccharides okay so oligosaccharide if that additional group happens to be oligosaccharide then this is called as globoside okay if this additional group happens to be an oligosaccharide this is called as a globoside okay now, we have got another set called as oligosaccharide, which is associated with NaNa, -E, otherwise called as NaNa or N acetyl neuraminic acid. It is otherwise called as sialic acid. Okay. So, this the structure will be we have got the central sphingosin alcohol here, we have got the fatty acid here. Okay. And we have got the oligosaccharides here and finally there will be sialic acid attached to one end okay this will be the structure for gangliosides okay so these they are called as gangliosides and these gangliosides will be named as gm1 gm2 gm3 and so on okay so what is the this thing what is the meaning for this g what is this g here the g stands for gangliosaide okay so what is this m m stands for monosialic acid otherwise called as the sialic acid or n acetyl neuraminic acid n acetyl 
neuraminic acid okay so this is the sialic acid clear and this 1 2 and 3 what are those numbers this 1 2 and 3 what are those numbers actually these numbers are the one which actually denotes the chromatographic motility of these kind of gangliosides okay so when these gangliosides are uh, present on a chromatographic chamber okay so these actually starts moving okay so the 1 2 and 3 actually denotes the chromatographic mobility of those kind of gangliosides okay so guess what which one is the simplest gangliosides among these three the simplest gangliosides is gm3 gangliosides this is the simplest gangliosides okay and gm1 gangliosides will be the most complex gangliosides okay and this gangliosides actually acts as a receptor for cholera toxin in your intestines clear and they these gangliosides usually act as receptors mostly guys okay and uh, this gm1 is a specialized receptor for receiving the cholera toxin in your intestines